All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Swaggy here. Today, we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens. They have won five straight football games after dropping their first two. The difference now between the Ravens then when they were 0-2 is feeding Derrick Henry. If you go back to the Chiefs game, Henry was just 13 for 46 with a touchdown, 3.5 average. In the Bucks game, goes out there, runs it. 15 times for 169 yards. You want to go to the Washington game. Henry ends up going out there and finishes with a total of 24 carries for 132 yards. I mean, Derrick Henry's just played like a man possessed. Him and Lamar Jackson, that's just the most unstoppable duo I think I've seen since Brady and Gronk. I mean, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I don't know how you can come up with a game plan to defend these guys. And the biggest key has been the formations. A lot more eye formations, tight formations, just getting Henry the ball, whether or not they know it's a run or not, it just doesn't even matter. But Lamar is clearly the best player in the NFL right now. He's clearly the most dynamic, just electric player in the game he's about to win his third mvp he's only 27 by the way he turned 27 back in january lamar had five touchdown guys no turnovers he ended up running the ball it was, in, was it nine times for you know, 52 yards so lamar would just had an, an overall amazing game he was fantastic the one kind of thing that frustrated me was when he threw that backwards pass to zay and ended up being picked up by the buccaneers it ended up almost giving momentum to the Bucks, and they nearly came back they had an onside kick but thankfully they didn't get their next onside kick and the Ravens were able to run some clock and and win this football game but there's one thing about the Ravens to me right now that has me concerned and that's going to be their defense I don't think it was bad tonight it did pick off Baker two times but it did give up 370 yards passing, another 125 yards rushing, which is 4.2 yards per carry, a rushing touchdown. You would think that the Ravens would have blew them out with the way they moved the ball in offense, but they really didn't. And it's just a lot of life, a lot, a lot of life for the Bucs. They should have put them away. They were down 10 to nothing, but then they scored 27 unanswered. And all of a sudden, you know, the Bucs, I thought, might make a late comeback. It was kind of crazy. But, um, I mean, you look at the Ravens' defense. It was the best in football last season. And now it's it's been 28th in the league. You look at the amount of points they've given up. Um, of course, against the Bucs, 31. Against Washington, 23. 38 to the Bengals. Just 10 to the Buffalo Bills. But, you know, 25 to the Cowboys. 23 to the Raiders and then 20 to the Chiefs. So, I mean, you had a defense again that was 28th coming into this week, talking about the Bucks week, week seven, in terms of points allowed, and then they give up 31, which is more than their average. I mean, the defense definitely is not where it was last year, but the offense is much, much better. So it kind of cancels out. I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking about the defense right now because they still have a lot of guys that can get up the quarterback. Marlon Humphrey had two interceptions off of Baker in this game in the red zone. One was one of them, and the other one, of course, was just on a third down trying to hit Godwin on an out route type of type of ish route. But just the Baltimore, they're definitely gonna have to clean that up because if they want to beat the Chiefs, we know it's gonna be a very close low scoring type of game. It might be 24 to 20, it might even be 20 to 17. The defense is ultimately going to decide who wins that game. Yes, the offense is much better. Like I said, Henry is killing it. Lamar is killing it. Mark Andrews is now getting involved. There's a lot of weapons for the Ravens. Todd Munkin, I, I think, has been calling a hell of a season for the Ravens. But it's going to come down to stops. Who can get the key stops? And can the Ravens get key stops against Patrick Mahomes and his offense, especially considering the fact that this morning they traded for DeAndre Hopkins? I mean, that's for you guys to decide, but I just I haven't seen it consistently for the Ravens in these big games. So that's just one thing that I wanted to address. I think a trade could be coming. A lot of these teams are getting receivers. The Bills get Amari Cooper. The Jets go and get Devontae Adams. The Chiefs get DeAndre Hopkins. I think the Ravens, they might get a corner. They might get an edge rusher, right? I think edge rushing is probably going to be what they do because if you have multiple edge rushers, well, they can they can mix in, right? You can never have too many edge rushers. That's what they'll tell you in football, man. Everyone knows that. So I definitely have to stay tuned for that because the deadline is November 5th, which is coming up. I mean, we're talking about you know, two weeks, maybe less than two weeks like that. That's going to be here. So um, outside of that, just this game, it was just an absolute slugfest. I mean, you fall behind 10 to nothing. You score 27 unanswered and Derrick Henry puts together a, a long run. It's just it's kind of wild to me how close this game actually looks from the score because the Ravens were just such a better team. I mean, I guess it was the slow start. Of course, the Bucks marched down the field. They scored a touchdown, which was what their like fourth or fifth straight game opening up with a touchdown. So the Bucks were red hot. Mike Evans ends up leaving this game in the second quarter with an injury. Chris Godwin late in this fourth quarter, and I mean late with a minute left, ends up leaving. So it was a tough loss for the Bucks just to lose in general and not fall to four and three, but also to lose your two best 
receivers. I mean, that's why the Bucks have been so successful this season is because of those two guys and Baker's been playing well too, but without them. But uh, yeah, just you know, the run game was tough for the Ravens to stop. It didn't kill them. That Rashad White, 10 for 40. Sean Tucker, 5 for 29. Bucky Irvin, 9 for 23. Like it didn't really kill them, like I said. But the Bucks, they just they moved the ball down the field, but they couldn't finish off drives. Whether or not they had to punt, they had to settle for a field goal. If you think about it, Baker threw an interception down in the red zone. That takes away at least three points, but let's just say the Bucks end up scoring a touchdown. That's seven points. And then that field goal, right? that they missed from 55 yards well they technically would have had to go for two so everything changes man play by play but you know the, a couple of mistakes right miss a field goal miss a touchdown a baker throws that second pick uh, you know of course when you miss that field goal all of a sudden you give the ravens great field position and they score so it's just little things like that end up being the biggest thing that ultimately side of the game was turnovers the ravens only had that one turnover tuesday flyers if they had a couple more turnovers the Bucks maybe win this game, right? So, but defensively, Roquan Smith had 18 tackles. Kyle Hamilton had 11 tackles. Um, I thought the edges did a pretty good job. Like, Adafi Owe had a sack. He put on good pressure. Uh, I thought, honestly, you know, our Darius Washington had a very good game. And, and the Ravens are getting healthier, too, especially in the secondary. So, um, they just got back one of their key guys who was activated off of the IR. Arthur Mullet. Yeah, Arthur Mullet ended up coming back, which is um, a big-time addition. Justin Tucker had a good game, kicked a 52-yard field goal, um, and knocked down all of his extra points, too. So, um, And, of course, he had a chip shot. But, yeah, this was just a fun game for Baltimore. Of course, a lot of people are now asking themselves, well, is this the best team in football? I think the Ravens still have more to prove. I think defensively they've got to get cleaned up. Offensively, they just got to keep their foot on the gas because that's why they're not – undefeated right i mean the chiefs game was just a couple of mistakes but the raiders game they took their foot off the gas they nearly blew a huge lead against the cowboys in that fourth quarter because they let their foot off the gas and didn't stay aggressive so the ravens i don't really have any concerns with them and i would say right now they're either the second or the third best team in football i'll put the chiefs number one i'll put the ravens two and i'll put the lions three maybe the Lions two raider uh, ravens three i don't really it doesn't really matter right the ravens are trying to be the best team and i don't know when their next loss is going to come because they've got cleveland denver cincinnati pittsburgh but yeah the Steelers have given them trouble but like let's be real here i'm certainly picking the ravens in that game chargers eagles giants Steelers, texans cleveland right like we could the next ravens loss could legitimately be december 21st right They've won five in a row. Keep that in mind. So I just don't see this team losing anytime soon. Maybe they run into a desperate, desperate Bengals team in week 10 on Thursday Night Football on a short week. But I, there's no team is better than the Ravens that they play the rest of the year. And it's not like there's a Lions game in there, a Chiefs game in there, right? No, like legitimately, I think the Ravens are actually clearly better than everyone they're about to play. Maybe they drop one or two. But to that point, we're talking about they lose two more games the rest of the year. They're going to be, you know, what, they'd be... They already have two losses, so they'd be 13-4. and four. And no Ravens fan listening right now would complain about a 13-4 and four season. That probably ends up getting the one seed. Maybe the Chiefs go 13-4 and four and they have the tiebreaker. But um, the best case scenario for the Ravens is legitimately they get the one seed again. And this time they'll be more prepared when the Chiefs come to Baltimore, of course. Because the key is Derrick Henry. Everyone's like, oh, well, they had Henry and they lost in week one. Well, yeah, because Henry, what, what I say, 13 for 46? It was at three and a half yards per carry. So Derrick Henry has to be the guy against the Chiefs. Lamar, we know he's great, but you've got to take pressure off of him because he's just acts to do too much at times. And this season, he hasn't been because of Henry. And he's starting to figure it out. And, and Lamar figures it out. I mean, again, he's one of the most electric, dynamic talents this game has ever seen. He's unstoppable, right? How many guys are unstoppable in the NFL? Lamar Jackson certainly one of them. He sure as hell looked like it against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on primetime, guys. Monday Night Football.